Here in Bangladesh, rapid population growth is increasing the pressure upon the nation's natural resources. And farmers must make the most of limited amounts of land by intensifying and diversifying production while ensuring the food produced is safe. Now, many have turned to aquaculture. In fact, fish reared in ponds like these currently provide as much as 60% of the nation's animal protein. Salma Yasmin is an aquaculture farmer in Jessor district. Salma is fortunate. Undernutrition is a major problem here, and unsafe food, contaminated water, and poor sanitation further lead to reduced absorption of nutrients in vulnerable individuals. However, Salma is now benefiting from government training in safe food production, which has raised her awareness of the dangers of foodborne illnesses. Such good practices prevent bacterial pathogens, parasites and chemical residues from entering the food chain and causing illness, which not only benefits Salma's family, but also members of the community who buy her fish. And producing safer food has also improved her marketing opportunities. With 12.5% of the global population suffering from chronic hunger, many countries around the world also need to increase food production in order to meet their food security needs. The four pillars of food security are availability of food, access to that food, utilization in terms of how our bodies use food, and a stable environment. And food safety plays a key role in each of these. Food availability can be seriously undermined when food is no longer fit for consumption, due to contamination by excessive residues, mycotoxins or pathogenic organisms. Food security and food safety are very much interconnected. Handling of the food can cause a big problem. Both the food can become contaminated and therefore it will be difficult to sell that food, leave alone eating the food. So they are two are very much interconnected. The second pillar, access to food, is also related to access to markets. Income generation can be a key to food security. Producing safe food is critical for this and can directly contribute to better nutrition through the raising of incomes and employment levels. FAO in Bangladesh is promoting the, the domestic consumption but we're also promoting the, the export because obviously uh, better income means better ability to buy food, access to food in the marketplace. However, in cases of food insecurity, the focus is often on availability and access to food with little consideration of safety. Food utilisation addresses not only how much food people eat, but also what and how they eat. Benefiting nutritionally from the food we consume can only be achieved if the food does not cause other problems. When food is unsafe, the nutritionally vulnerable suffer even more. Globally, every year approximately 2 million people die from diarrheal diseases, from contaminated food and water. 80 to 100% of children in some African countries are chronically exposed to aflatoxins, which are not only carcinogenic, but there's also growing evidence that they are directly linked to stunting. And approximately 56 million people are currently infected with foodborne trematodes, a parasite found in meat. Of these, 7.9 million have severe symptoms, and over 7,000 people die annually. Also with increased demands for meat comes a need for increased vigilance in monitoring the use of antimicrobial drugs as their misuse is contributing to concerns about growing antimicrobial resistance. 
Improving the safety of food requires appropriate government standards and oversight, in conjunction with effective practices by all operators along the food chain. The public health inspectors who do uh, routine monitoring and surveillance of uh, um, food outlets uh, in the Cook Islands, I think, has helped to probably curb the, uh, the you know, foodborne disease outbreaks. While good practice starts on the farm with the safety of feed, it must be maintained throughout the whole food chain all the way to the consumer. Everybody has a role to play to ensure that food is safe. We don't leave it to the regulatory agencies alone. Everybody in their own little way has to do their own little part to ensure that the food is safe. If we want to ensure food and nutrition security, we have to increase our efforts to provide safe food for all. There can be no food security without food safety.